Welcome back to Lakeland, and we're here at Cub Crafters, uh, the company that started out as a refurbisher of existing Cubs and has a history leading up to the product we're going to look at today, which is the Super Sport Cub, which is a light sport aircraft factory assembled. And we're talking today with Jim Richmond, who is the president of the company, about it. Jim, we can't get into talking about this plane until we talk about the history of your company a little bit. I know this could be a very long conversation. Give us the, the short version and just give us the basic steps that got you to where you are today. All right. 1980, we started rebuilding Super Cubs, and uh, then we started adding modifications and incorporating uh, new modifications, developing new modifications. That led to uh, assembling essentially airplanes out of all new parts, which led to certifying those newly assembled parts into new airplanes, which led to uh, getting our own type certificate in the standard uh, airworthiness uh, category for our top cub. And uh, about that same time, the light sport law passed, and uh, we developed the sport cub for the LSA category. We've been building the Sport Cub for about two and a half years now, and uh, just introducing now the Super Sport Cub, which is uh, our latest aircraft. Now, your product line has a little bit of something for everyone, from uh, from factory built airplanes to experimentals, and now an LSA. Tell us a little bit about your product line and how they all fit together. Yes, yeah, so well, we have, as I mentioned before, the Top Cub is a certified standard category airplane. It's 2,300 pounds gross weight and an empty weight of about 1250 so we have a huge useful load with that airplane and on amphibious floats it has 750 pounds useful load so you can put two big people in it fill it up with fuel and on amphibs that's pretty impressive there's not another airplane that I know of in the world that can do that then the Sport Cub is our LSA offering with a hundred horse Continental and it's a newly designed airplane that looks an awful lot like a Cub it flies just like a Cub, but everything about it is new. The, the only interchangeable parts between it and a Cub would be the landing gear and the tailwheel. And uh, everything else is different. It includes uh, flaps and vortex generators, two fuel tanks, lots of carbon fiber equipment, and uh, lots of milled aluminum parts. Uh, we're a lot lighter than the Piper Cub uh, and a lot stronger. The next airplane in the lineup would be this airplane, the Super Sport Cub, which is everything the Sport Cub is, but uh, we've introduced a new 180 horse engine, which allows spectacular performance for climb and takeoff, and then you throttle back and cruise on, 100, uh, on 80 horsepower maximum continuous. So you get the spectacular takeoff and climb, and even more efficiency than with the 100 horse Continental engine in cruise. Um, we also offer the Sport Cub and the Super Sport Cub in kit form. We call it the Carbon Cub kit, and it can be built either to LSA requirements with the 100 horse engine or as an amateur built uh, experimental airplane with a higher gross weight. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at cirrusdesign.com. Tell us a little bit about some of the features of the Super Sport Cub, since this is the, the product you're showing at the show today. Well, the Super Sport Cub has a lot of carbon fiber, and uh, aluminum and uh, it's, it's, a, it's all about lightweight with this airplane. Because the engine is larger, we had to keep the weight to a minimum to squeeze it into the LSA category. And you'll notice this airplane is a silver and red airplane and the first impression is that it's red. But if you look closely, there's only about 30% of the airplane that's painted red. And uh, the leading edges, the cowl, um, and it's meant to be that way. We were looking for a, for a way to save some weight, and we saved about 12 pounds by this two-tone paint scheme. Um, and we've, uh, <laughs> we've looked for pounds and pretty much found all of those, and then we went after ounces, and lately I've been asking my vendors if they know how many grams are in an ounce because I want them to know, and we're looking for the grams too. So. Now, one of the big innovations in this plane, at least, at least from your company standpoint, is that it marks the debut of a, an in-house produced engine. Tell us about what went into that and getting it ASTM certified. Well, the ASTM certification process for a, 
uh, internal combustion spark ignition engine is quite straightforward. We used a, uh, a Lycoming clone. Uh, ECI has been building a number of parts uh, that are direct replacement parts for Lycoming for years. And we took uh, their basic engine and added some lightweight components to it, uh, the sump and the accessory case, the uh, magnetos, and uh, some of the things that are quite heavy uh, and quite old in their design. And we said, can we do it a better way? And so we went to vendors and uh, came up with uh, electronic ignition and uh, a much lighter sump. And uh, we saved about 40 pounds in the engine. So we're only about 29 pounds heavier than a Continental O200. So uh, it's all about weight. Can this engine be maintained pretty much anywhere by anybody who does Lycoming work? Yes, it's uh, the, right. the basics are the very same as a, as a Lycoming. It's a 340 cubic inch engine that's very similar to a Lycoming O320. Carbureted, um, it, it's a very simple engine. There's no accessories. Uh, it's got a starter and an alternator and an oil pump, and that's about it. It's very simple. Welcome to the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Real-time, 24-7 online, audio, and video programming, where aviation has been getting updated for over a decade. Distributing over 11,000 stories, features, audio, and video programs every year, only ANN covers aviation and aerospace with this much depth, insight, and expertise. Check us out on the web at aero-news.net. When you bring up accessories, I have to bring up panel because there are things in the panel in this plane that would never have been dreamed of by people who flew the originals. Tell us what you've gone for here and how it goes over with the traditional, traditionally minded customers who buy these airplanes. Well, this airplane is our test airplane. Um, we put a very complicated, not complicated, just a very deluxe panel in it that monitors all the temperatures. Uh, because we wanted to know that our cowling and our baffling and our exhaust system and that kind of thing all work like they're supposed to. So I needed uh, individual EGTs and CHTs and cowling inside the cowl temperature. And uh, so I've just got probes going everywhere on this airplane. But it is, uh, it's got the Dynon D180, so it's got artificial horizon and it can calculate true airspeed and winds aloft and uh, fuel burn and fuel used and fuel remaining at the waypoint. And, and so it's just, uh, it's, quite a, it's quite a machine. How do they, these get ordered? I know they're available with steam gauges, and a lot of people probably prefer that still in this kind of airplane. Yes, most, most people have ordered the steam gauges with a, a good GPS. We put the Garmin 496 in, uh, typically 495. But it's all about looking out the windows and uh, sticking rudder flying. It's kind of nice to know where you are relative to home base and where fuel is, and uh, no more issues about daydreaming and finding yourself uh, looking up and saying, where am I? You just push the button and say, which direction do I point this thing to home? <laughs> Tell us about pricing and availability. How, how many of these do you intend to build a year and what do they, what do they go for? The Super Sport Cub is priced at uh, 163 285 the base price, with radios and lights and uh, options that probably most people are going to opt for. 175 or so is probably realistic. Uh, we're building three a month right now. Uh, we have the capability of building a few more. And, uh, but right now, for three a month, that's, that's keeping us busy. Doesn't, doesn't Scott Carson fly one of your planes? He does, the CEO of Boeing Aircraft Company, yes. So even the people who make the big and or semi-automated stuff want to come and get a stick and rudder and feel that on the weekend? It's all about fun. <laughs> well, Jim, thanks very much for taking some time out today. The plane looks fantastic, and we wish you all success. Thank you very much for coming.